Invite every module that we are importing in the JavaScript file that will be included in our build. Changes in such modules are going to be reflected on the page automatically, without us having to refresh the page manually. For example, in here we are importing two files, and that means that if I'm going to change anything inside app.css or title.js, we don't actually need to refresh the page in the browser in order to see those changes. But in addition to that, in Laravel, if we're going to modify something in one of our blade templates, we're still going to see changes reflected in the browser, and we don't need to refresh the page. That is because Laravel with plugin uses another plugin, which monitors changes in some directories. One of such directories is directory views, where all our blade templates are located by default. And if anything will change in those templates, the page will be automatically refreshed. There is actually the setting which allows us to control the page refresh, which is called a refresh. As we can see in here, this setting has value true, so the browser will automatically refresh the page when we're gonna modify blade templates. But the thing is that it monitors changes only in some directories, and if we want to keep track for changes inside custom directory, for example, let's create a directory called data in the project root. And in here I'm gonna add a file posts.json. Let's say this file is going to store our posts. I'm going to add three posts with names post1, post2, and post3. And let's say now we're going to read this file in one of our blade templates. Let's add a heading posts. And then I'm going to create list and iterate over those posts that we have added to the post.json file. First of all, I'm gonna have to read the file with posts. Let's do so by using class file. And in here we have to specify the path to our newly created file posts.json. So this instruction is going to read the file. And on every iteration, we're going to assign each post to this post variable. But of course, the file will be read as a plain text, but we have to convert this content into an array. Let's do so by using json decode function, like so. So now in every iteration of this loop, we're going to create new li element, where we're gonna print out title of the post. So before we'll check changes in the browser, let's get back to app.js and remove this title.js import. For this example, we're not gonna need this. So as you can see, the file has been read, and all post titles have been printed on the page. So before proceeding further, I prefer to tweak some styles first. Let's open up app.css. Here we're gonna modify a couple of CSS rules, mainly to display content at the top left corner of the page. And then I'm also going to assign a couple of rules to list, to remove markers, as well as any paddings. And then for individual list entries, I'm going to add vertical margins of 5 pixels. And here is what we got. And now let's say I'd like to add another post inside posts.json. But after we're gonna do so, the page will not automatically be refreshed. So we'll have to manually do a refresh in order to see our new post. Because it doesn't watch for changes in the custom directory data where our posts.json resides. But thankfully we can tell Vit about this directory by going inside vit.config.js and let's just specify the path to the data folder as a value for this refresh option like this. And this way, any changes inside of any file that is located inside of data folder will force browser to refresh the page. Let's make sure that this is really the case. I'm going to get back to posts.json. Let's remove the post number four, check it out in the browser, and right away we see that the page was refreshed automatically. And now let's do another change. For example, rename the title of the third post. And this change is also reflected. There are also some additional options that allow us to tweak the behavior of the page refresh and to specify those options, we have to use the following syntax. I'm going to assign an array with one object to the refresh option, where I'm gonna include key pass, 
where we're going to have a list of paths to those directories or files that we like to watch for changes. And then additionally, I can also include config object, where, for example, I'm going to add option called delay, where I can specify how much time we should wait before it is going to refresh our page. After that, the browser is going to refresh the page with a 3 seconds delay after we do any changes. So the refreshing functionality is actually provided by another with plugin called with plugin full reload, which Laravel plugin uses under the hood. You can read more about this plugin as well as all the options it provides on the official GitHub page. Link to the source code of this lesson as always will be in the video description.